Hi, John Lay here from Town to Learning. I'm here to introduce the LMS Almanac, our newest publication here at Town to Learning. And the, the Almanac's the ultimate no-nonsense guide for LMS buyers and sellers. And I'd like to take you uh, through what we were we were thinking when we founded Town to Learning uh, over two years ago. Uh, we started thinking about this Almanac and started the research process. Uh, and in all, we, we we've now have reviewed 111 learning management systems. We've written almost 100 serious blog articles about learning management and the application of learning management technology. We've helped about 25 customers now, our customers find, to find their requirements and find the right LMS for them. Uh, and we took all that information and we folded that in uh, to the Almanac so that we could uh, help buyers and sellers uh, understand the marketplace, the requirements that are out there, how organizations are using uh, learning management technology and really provide some practical advice. So uh, let me scroll down here and, and show you the uh, show you the, uh, the the table of contents uh, and the depth of this report. So what we did uh, is we introduced the uh, learning management uh, industry in general. And there's really four types or uh, four parts of the the industry, and and that is the the corporate learning management space, the association the continuing education and the academic are four related yet distinct areas of learning management and, and types of learning management focus. In this corporate edition, what we've done is really peeled down into uh, exactly that, the corporate area of, of learning management system and all the applications. So the first thing that we did is we outlined 10 different trends uh, that are really driving the market and the, the dynamic changes that are happening in the market. Uh, in the last 10 years, we have went from um, approximately 25 or 30 uh, realistic vendors to now almost 700 uh, viable learning management system vendors. And that dramatic or exponential uh, change is really being driven by a series of trends, or we believe a series of trends that we've identified here. Then we went down and we wanted to, to prune down into the different types of, of corporate LMS solutions. And, and what we found is that uh, the corporate market has different types of LMS companies that are, are chasing the different types of LMS opportunities that exist. Uh, and so we go through the, those four types. Uh, number one, the employee LMS. And we go through what is it, the uses of it, what is the business case of it, what are uh, the top 10 features of that, and uh, who are the best employee LMS vendors, and give you some real life case studies. We did that for the employee LMS, for the channel and partner LMS, for the customer and prospect LMS, and the all-purpose LMS that uh, can really do all of those pieces. So we really dug down deep to give you a, a great understanding of, of how organizations are using it and, and really what's important to them. But what we found is that the industry is loaded with these LMS requirement guides, but they're really just a spreadsheet of a thousand different LMS requirements that may or may not be interrelated and it makes it really confusing for LMS buyers to review all these different requirements and determine what they need or don't need and it, it's kind of a, a fruitless activity to uh, to do so without starting first at your use cases and your functional use cases and kind of working back into the requirements that you actually need and uh, by doing that uh, what organizations can do is prune down the thousands of requirements to maybe 25 or 35 critical requirements, and that allows buying organizations to find more targeted solutions versus paying for a solution that can do every possible learning management functionality, but at the same time is kind of hard to use and administer and set up because of, of all that complexity that is unneeded. And so uh, what we did then is we broke uh, defining an LMS and the discriminators between uh, these 700 or almost 700 vendors is, is really their support for the functional requirements, for technical requirements, and for service requirements. And so for two years, we collected all the requirements that we could find in RFP templates and also on product listings and websites, and we grouped them all together, and we started crossing out ones that were similar and bucketing them together uh, until we came up with these 16 broad buckets of LMS functionality. And in each one of these broad buckets, we outline basic, intermediate, and advanced levels of, of, of functionality uh, so that buying organizations can see how sophisticated 
uh, requirements they actually need. We did the same for the different types of hosting models, the common types of integrations uh, that are in LMS, the different layers of security, and then we even went through the different service requirements, uh, outlining the differences of what you can expect from self-service and assisted setup vendors to full service and even system integrators on how they approach LMS uh, setup and what are the, the positives and negatives of each one of those. And then we dove down into the different levels of administrative end user support that LMS vendors uh, buy, which is another big differentiator. Uh, what I didn't mention at the beginning is uh, in a previous life, I spent 13 years selling high-end learning management systems and learned the ins and the outs, of course, of all license and pricing. And so over the last two years, I've been collecting pricing from a variety of different vendors. Many vendors put it on their website for free now. And we aggregated all this pricing and, and defined the different types of license models that we saw. And so we, in this section, we talk about the SaaS license, the usage license, the name license, the perpetual license. And uh, we, we did this uh, so that uh, you could see the differences between how, organi or how LMS vendors count usage and how that uh, rolls down into what the, the solution actually costs. And then we actually gave uh, recommended or guidelines for pricing tiers of inside the corporate space, regardless if that's for employee uh, or for extended enterprise learners. And then finally, we have, or uh, almost finally, we, we, we included a, uh, a 250 plus definition and acronym guide, jargon and acronym guide. So we took uh, hundreds of, of uh, different acronyms that we found in learning technology and the definitions and we created a, an easy to use one sentence definition guide uh, so that uh, you can educate yourself on what these things mean without getting a PhD in, in uh, some level of technology. And then finally, we compiled 75 identical vendor profiles. So uh, through the use of our uh, LMS vendor survey that we conducted in late 2015 and early 2016, we took a subset of each vendor's responses and created an apples to apples uh, comparison of uh, the vendor uh, of the vendors across a series of business functional technical professional service and support criteria so that organizations can define their requirements using the requirements guide and then use the profiles to find vendors that are are appropriate shortlisted vendors so that instead of spending a whole bunch of time going vendor by vendor like I've done the last uh, two years and figure out what they're qualified for. You can use the the vendor profiles to get a snapshot of, of that qualify of that qualification, uh, so that you can find the five or ten LMS vendors that you really want to investigate further in your selection process. So let me show you some uh, what some of this looks like. Uh, here are some key uh, key trends uh, that the key trend sections. We talk about professional services. We've got lots of charts, over 50 charts and graphs. Uh, we've got about 25 different vendor listings. Uh, when we talk about the, the different types of, of LMS solutions, we talk about the employee LMS, we talk about the, the channel learning management system. As we mentioned before, we go into the corporate learning management system and what are the uses of that and uh, who are the best all-purpose vendors, for example, or the best customer LMS vendors. Uh, we identify that. Uh, the LMS requirements guide, we go into each one of those uh, functional requirements and we talk about uh, at a medium and an advanced level and who are the best vendors in that particular one. And we do that for content creation and continuing education and CRM. The technical requirements, we talk about the different hosting models, the different integration types that are available. All of this is backed up with graphs and charts and uh, statistics from uh, that we've collected from our, our vendor survey. Uh, we have that license and pricing guide we discussed and the different license models that are available and defining those and uh, what are the types of uh, uh, licenses that are uh, available in the industry. That learning and technology acronym guide where we spell out in one sentence uh, all these different acronyms and then finally the uh, LMS uh, vendor profile. So where is all this data coming from uh, and, and that we're quoting inside of here. So uh, here's the profiles. It gives a little guide of uh, 19 areas and 150 pieces of data that we're collecting. 
uh, but the, the data from these vendor profiles is, is coming from this list of, of 75 vendors that includes big and small and uh, cloud-based and uh, traditional-based LMSs uh, of all sorts so that we could get a real good uh, cross-section of the industry and of the data so that we could really make predictions on what's out there and where the innovation is and, and what's going on. And, and, and here's a, a sample what a sample uh, profile looks like. So this is a bill of Freestone. We talk about the company overview. We show their customers, top reasons why customers buy, the top industries that they compete in. We ask them what are critical features uh, for their customers. So a lot of the buzzwords in the industry to, to see what was critical to them, give contact and social information to get there. Typical implementation fees if they provided those. Uh, the license models that they support, the types of corporate learning and learning initiatives that their, their LMS is focused for, regions that they, they work in and actively support, uh, standards that they support. And then we used our uh, proprietary algorithms uh, for, uh, for the strengths, so that basic media inter and, and advanced uh, feature sets for those uh, different functional feature sets. We created a way that we could um, measure the vendor's compliance to, towards all of those requirements. So zero would be you would have none of uh, the, the features required for that and 10 would be have everything that we've identified or more. And so what this shows you is really the strength of the vendor in terms in relation to the industry. So a Abila, for example, with nines here on continuing education and custom fields really has the maximum of the capabilities out of all the 75 vendors uh, that we identified. Uh, so that is uh, how you can use that. Any additional customer benefits that they have, any language localizations that they're, uh, so before it was like areas that they did business in, but now this is the actual language localizations that they support, as well as integration strength and, and uh, ongoing support uh, services. So between this two-page profile, there's a lot of information uh, that you can get to qualify vendors in or out, especially if you have uh, specific requirements. So here's another one, Access Planet, and you can see that you know each one of these is going to be different. Uh, of course, there's a Cord LMS and Administrate and um, uh, Agilia. I was having a hard time saying that one. And uh, so there, there they go. 75 of them uh, that you can uh, uh, that you can use to to, to qualify Active Mind. Uh, LMS here is another one. So that's the Talented Learning LMS Almanac. It's deep and detailed. It's no nonsense. It's independent. Uh, it's fiercely independent. Uh, no vendor was charged to, to be a part of this or to, to be included. It was all voluntary. And uh, what we believe it is is a, is a real solid tool to save you a lot of time and effort in identifying what you need from a requirement standpoint and just as importantly or more importantly, finding a, a short list or qualifying a short list of vendors that you can include in your process, all of them uh, which would uh, theoretically be able to handle your requirements versus spending a whole bunch of time going through hundreds of LMS vendors and learning what they do and don't do well. Uh, and that is the Talented Learning uh, LMS Almanac. You can go to talentedlearning.com and access it from the top menu or from the, the ad on the right-hand side uh, for more information. Thank you.